Hey, Vano community. I hope everyone's doing well. Uh, as you can tell by the surroundings, this is the second video in a row that I have filmed upstairs in my dining room and not in my music room. So you may catch me um, looking around because I'm distracted by bright lights um, and cars and squirrels and rabbits and moose and whatever else is roaming the streets of, of my city. Um, so I have, to, I have to apologize now if you catch me kind of, uh, I'm not used to filming these videos with all these windows around me. Um, really quickly, why I'm filming these videos upstairs, and if you know me on Facebook, um, I kind of briefly mentioned this, um, and I don't want to go into it too much, um, just, be, I guess just because. But I had a, I had a flood in my music room. Uh, normally, um, I film my videos in front of my stereo, but uh, for a long time I was filming in front of my record shelves, and that's the room it happened in. Um, it was not preventable, and it's something I don't really want to talk about. I've not really assessed the damage to any vinyl. Um, there was definitely damage on the record shelves themselves, but right now we're too busy tearing up carpets and tearing up underlay and you know dealing with the house stuff. Records will definitely come in second in, um, in this case. But at the moment, I'm without, a, I'm, with, I'm without a music room, and my stereo is kind of all in pieces right now as we kind of madly got everything out of the basement. So I'm still going to buy records, but you're going to have to put up with natural light. You know, and really, I only film in the dark because it makes me look 30 years younger, because now you can see how I look my age now. Here's everyone. Okay. Um, anyways, I, I didn't... Don't really want to talk about that flood a whole lot just it's just a point of reference and i guess um just a slice of life what's going on with me right now um as i film this this is the week in between the record store day and the record store day hangover um that i usually go through and then coming up this coming weekend is our record fair in my city where i sell as a vendor and i buy hopefully sell more than buy and um so this has been, uh, it's going to be a busy consecutive couple weekends coming up. So hopefully I'll have some stuff to show you. Uh, I'll have some stuff to show you from the record fair coming up. Um, who knows? If my wife has her, uh, has her way, um, I won't be showing you anything. Anyways. Uh, it's not like I have any place to put it right now. Everything's all being torn up right now. Anyways, having said that, I still have stuff to show you. Um having no music room and having a flood doesn't mean I'm not going to buy vinyl because that would be just silly, wouldn't it? Okay. Okay. I'll put the coffee down. That's annoying. Um, this pile I'm going to show you of recent vinyl finds is a combination of, um, the thrift store stuff. I always show you, um, I answered an online ad with some incredible stuff for really, really crazy low prices, to be honest with you. Um, there's one new arrival that came in the mail via Amazon, and, but the bulk of this is going to be thrift store stuff, but you know, you guys know, you guys know the drill. You guys know where I get this stuff from. I've not been buying a, a lot of brand new records apart from Record Store Day. Um, I think I've referenced this before maybe too many times as I'm going to, um, London, England in July to see The Cure and visit our daughter. Uh, so that's... So yeah, so I've been kind of trying to um, reduce the amount of new vinyl I've been buying. But this is an odd instance where I actually got one in the mail. Um, and I haven't even opened it yet because I don't have a system at the moment. But I got um, U2's All That You Can't Leave Behind, um, the new reissue, um, 180 grams. Uh, what else came out? Wide Awake in America and Pop, which I already have original pressings of. Uh, and I just never ever bothered to have one of these. Uh, or I didn't pick one of these up back in the day, but I was very happy to get this. To me, this is uh, maybe the last great U2 album. There, uh, every album after this has had great moments, but to me, this was their kind of their comeback album. Um, after a lot of people, I guess, didn't like pop and whatnot. But uh, to me, to me, this is uh, front to back their last probably truly great album. I think they probably have another one in them. They just haven't made it yet we'll see I, I think it's in them anyways all that you can't leave behind uh you two the brand new uh reissue that uh just came out got that in the mail 
Um, let's see. I'm going to separate this one from the bunch because this one was courtesy of um, a gentleman named George in my city who runs our record fairs, oddly enough, to, from his... Um, his stalls that he keeps at, at, at an antique mall locally in my city. Uh, I think I referenced this before. I have been in a terrible rabbit hole of just listening to Mop the Hoople a lot. Probably more than any man should. Uh, and I talked about that in my last Vinyl Fans video, so I won't really go into the merits of Mop the Hoople. But I will mention this album because what this album is, this is called Rock and Roll Queen. This is from 1972 on Island Records. And I mentioned the record label for a reason is before they recorded All the Young Dudes, which was their big album, everyone knows, that was on CBS Records. But everything before that album was on Island Records. I think they did four albums. Um, they really didn't do a whole lot outside of the UK. Um, but those albums, there's a couple spotty ones like Mad Shadows and I think it was like Wildlife. But in between there, there's uh, what, Brain Cappers in their first album. Just insanely awesome rock and roll and to find those albums here in Canada is I, I'm probably gonna have to when I go over to, to London uh, in summer I'll probably try to seek those out there but um, what this is though once again short story long this is on Island Records and it's kind of a comp well it's not kind of it is a compilation of the best moments from those Island Records uh, albums they did uh, fantastic I mean just Man, and of course I'm biased because I've been listening to nothing but Moth Hoople lately. But um, this, in, this is an incredible rock and roll album. Uh, and I recommend, uh, please, if you're interested, to, you know, you want to hear some great rock and roll. Uh, and I, I don't mean rock and roll as in 50s rock and roll, just great rock from uh, early 70s. Um, UK style. Um, that's not all the young dudes that you maybe have not heard before. I highly recommend early Moth Hoople. Just Great, great, great stuff. And I'm going to be annoying and have another drink of coffee. Um, what are we on to now? We are on to thrift store stuff. This is in no order. So uh, just hang tight because this is not any, I didn't front load this, uh, this pile. So a lot of the good stuff may be in the middle or in the back. But anyways, I picked this up for a buck and I see this all the time. And uh, I have the Mobile Fidelity copy of this. So, but since this band was just in, inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame recently, uh, I thought I'd pick this up because uh, there's a, a renewed interest in the band and I'll have no problem finding homes for this. But this is the Cars' first album. Really, really nice original Electra Records pressing. Um, like I said, uh, Cars are probably one of my favorite bands of, of the time. Um, and all of a sudden, now the spotlight's back on them. And, and about time, I feel. Uh, this one, um, I found this after the accident downstairs, um, and when all, and all my records are just everywhere, so I, I can't confirm that I actually have this record. But I bought it. Uh, it was only it wasn't it was only a few bucks, but um, I may have this in my pile of crap downstairs. Uh, so this might be a duplicate. Not sure, but I found a copy of Stevie Ray Vaughan Soul to Soul which I always thought was a lesser Stevie Ray Vaughan album. But then in retrospect, I looked at it and it's like, well, it's got Say What and Look at Little Sister. So really, with those two songs on it, I'm going to have to, when my stereo is working again, I'm going to have to reinvestigate this album again. But uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan sold a soul original pressing on CBS Records. Um, I did post this on the YouTube vinyl community and someone last video not the record store day one, but my last Vinyl Funds video, he was asking, and I'm sorry, I, I forgot to post a link. I forgot who was asking. He wanted to know what the link was for that YouTube uh, Facebook page, or the Facebook Vinyl page. It's called YouTube Vinyl Community. Um, and I don't have a link now, but if you just go to the search bar on Facebook and type in YouTube Vinyl Community, it'll come up. Uh, so that's what I'm always referring to, is that little vinyl group that I'm on. Um, I did post this when I found it. And... Uh, I have an original Canadian pressing of this album in the textured sleeve, and I found, believe it or not, um, top top three finds of the year of the past twelve months. I'm going to say original UK pressing on Factory Records of Joy Division's Unknown Pleasures. 
feeling the texture. You can kind of pick up the textured sleeve there kind of slightly. But this has the uh, etching, the porky pie etching. If, you don't, if you're a nerd on Discogs, you will know it. the original presses have a, a certain kind of message in the etching and all that. And then the inner sleeve is rounded, as I think, I believe it's rounded as opposed to squared off. R real nerd stuff here. But an original pressing. Yeah. My original Canadian pressing has been played to death since I was young. And believe it or not, at one point I, I was young. Um, and I, I say top three finds of the year, but it might be top three finds of the past 10 years. One of my favorite albums to find an original pressing, it's maybe VG Plus. It's got a couple of hairlines, but nothing major. Played it before the downfall of the stereo. Sounds fantastic. Uh, just amazing. And um, I always refer to this whenever I find an album like that. It's a heart attack moment. That was um, heart attack lying on the floor, spasming and shaking all over like a dead fish, because that that's one of those finds that you just that's that's maybe a once in a lifetime find to find that for the price I did. A couple bucks. Um, Johnny Cash, this is his first album, and it was released in Canada on Sun Records, uh, 1957, distributed by Quality Records in the states, and I'm going to brain fart. Uh, it was released with a different cover and a different title. It was called, was it with his red and hot blue guitar? You guys know what I'm talking about. Uh, in Canada, it was released in this cover, but it's uh, an original Sun Records pressing. And for some reason, whoever owned this prior to me, there was a little 8x10 by Johnny Cash in it, I don't know, of an era that didn't match this album, but whatever, it'll stay in there. But uh, what, if, like Folsom Prison Blues is on it. I walked the line. In fact, I played this uh, when I first got it. And the first song on here, I loved. It was called The Rock Island Life. Never heard it before. Loved it. And I found a really nice copy, um, relatively speaking, from for 1957, of Johnny Cash's first album. Something I've, um, Several people who've commented when I posted this on Facebook told me they have they've, they have copies of this album. So maybe it's not that rare, but I've, I've never seen it before in the wild. So Johnny Cash's 1957 debut album. Um, I'm going to park some stuff in case I start running low. This was the other day. And to be honest with you, Thrift Store Finds has been, it's starting to melt and it's kind of spring-like lately. The Thrift Store Finds should be picking up, but it, it's been kind of really slow. But uh, this popped up the other day. It was a, it, I went to this one thrift store and it was the same old stuff I find. And then this was tucked in there. It was an original copy of Jaco Pastorius' self-titled album. And I have this, but this one is uh, has a do not... It has an odd sticker on it that I've never seen before. Uh, not for sale outside Canada. Like, I know what that means, but it just... Um, I, have, I have another copy of this. Same pressing. It doesn't have the sticker on it, so it's a little bit odd. Once again, if you're a complete nerd, these kind of stickers might make it, I don't know, they might matter to you. Anyways, an original copy of Jaco Pastorius' first album, um, and that was really one of the only finds I had that one week uh, at thrift stores, but nice find anyways. Really nice condition copy. Um, these were not this one. I'm not going to lie to you. That's not going to be one of them. Um, these were from an online ad, I answered. And it was a lady advertising on the This is what happens when I'm out of my element. I'm just, I got records everywhere here. Um, actually, the, the, I'm going to finish off with one more thrift store one, then I'll get to this online ad. Uh, the only thing I think I found this week was the Jacko Pistorius and this, and I've never owned this on vinyl and I've never seen this at a thrift store ever, but an original really nice copy of Ry Cooter's Get Rhythm. Of course, the title track is uh, oddly, it all, see, it all comes full circle as a Johnny Cash song, Get Rhythm. But really nice copy. I've never owned this, never, uh, I've never seen this in the wild, and I think that was a whopping buck 99. Really nice copy. All right. Uh, what are we at for time? It's typical Dave time. By the way, I want to say hi to someone. Um, some people say I don't give them shout outs, but you got to watch the whole video because if you just, if you were skipping to me holding a photo, you're going to miss shout outs. Uh, I saw a guy on record store day. Um, I bumped into him at a local record store. I, I, I went looking around at different stores for different record store day titles. Um, his name was Chris. 
who lives in my city. He recognized me from my videos and uh, really, really nice guy. So Chris, if you're watching, um, hopefully I'll see you at the upcoming record fair in our city. But uh, it's really nice when I bump into people and they're really nice, uh, really nice folks. Um, it means a lot to me. So thanks, Chris, for the kind words and uh, hopefully I'll see you again. Having said that, see, if I, once again, it's not one of my videos unless I, I deviate and I have three different points going all at once and I'm not drinking coffee. Yeah. Anyways, online ad from, uh, ooh, was it Friday night? I guess that's irrelevant to you, uh, what night it was. Um, online ad, uh, I told her I would like, I think I, I think I said I, I'm interested in that one album. Um, like she didn't want much money for these records, which was surprising. So I'm, I'm assuming these records are going to be all beat up. She said, "Okay, well, meet me at uh, a McDonald's." Oddly enough, um, and she brought that one album I was interested in, but she also brought a big box of records. And she said, "Well, if you want to look through these two, I have these for sale." So I picked out how many did I pick out? I don't know. You'll see. As I show them, you can count. Uh, Yes, yeah, so this is all via an online ad, and really, I think, what is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven records. I think I gave her 20 bucks. So I think that's a good deal if you break it all down. Um, Kick Korea, the electric band. This is not representational. This, this is maybe the lesser of the titles that I'm going to show you here. Uh, Kick Korea band, 1986, and you can tell it's 1986 by Kitar. Kitar. Wow, 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 wow. Yeah, the mighty Chick Corea played a guitar at one point. Anyways, I'm not a huge Chick Corea fan. It was just in the box of stuff, and there wasn't that much money. So uh, I picked up a Chick Corea album. And you know what? These albums, they're not really hard to kind of uh, to pass along if I need to. Uh, a lot of these actually are just kind of either upgrades or they're kind of up for trade. They're going to be for trades or whatnot. Um, Journey, Escape. Um, of course, that'll be a... A really nice trader copy for someone. I talked about this in one of my other videos. Um, Journey and Sticks and those bands like that. I, I just the minute I find them, people are clamoring for them. I don't know why. So hence why I keep on showing you albums by Journey and Sticks and those ones because I pick them up because I show them to you, post that video, and by the time I post it, they're out the door. ACDC Back in Black, really nice original copy on Atlantic Records. Two Devo albums. This one is an upgrade. I have the marble vinyl pressing of this one, original marble vinyl. I have an original picture disc, but my original black vinyl copy is usually my go-to play one. Uh, it's like I said, like a lot of my albums, it looks like it's been played to death since I was 12. But a copy of Question, Are We Not Men? And the answer is, of course, We Are Devo. Really nice copy. So this is a much needed upgrade to the one I have. And then I got a copy of Freedom of Choice. Um, I would say this is an upgrade, but the only copy now that I have of this is I have that uh, Rhino reissue that was on multicolored vinyl, but this is an original pressing, um, original inserts of uh, Freedom of Choice by Devo. I love, love, love Devo. This was an oddity and I don't know why, I just, it was there. And it's worth a lot more than what she was asking for. And I just thought, ah, I'll pick it up. The wife hates this album. I can never play it in the house when she's home. If it's meatloaf. But it's bad I help picture disc. There you go. Uh, I don't know if that's the rarest thing ever. But I don't know if I've ever seen this on picture disc. I'm sure I have. I'm just not taking notice. But you know what? I'll be honest. I don't mind bad out of hell. It's an, it's an epic, I mean, I'm looking at the album now, and there's, there's, not, a, there's not a bad song on this album. Um, I know Meatloaf has its haters, but uh, I, I have no issues with this album whatsoever. So yeah, you know what, As, I think this, this, will, uh, this will stay in my collection, to be honest with you. So anyways, Picture Disc of Bat Out of Hell was part of that. And I know I parked a bunch of albums that I thought if I didn't have time to, I would show you. Um, you know what? Just a couple catalog fillers that I wasn't sure if I had, but Transex uh, message on the radio. Uh, Transex, uh, Canadian band, but they had an international smash hit in the 80s with a song called Living on Video, which is on this album. 
And when I DJ 80s music, um, Living on Video is one of the staple songs of our nights. It's one of those songs that people wait for, along with Blue Monday. It's uh, when I first started playing it, um, when I started my 80s night about 10 years ago. It was kind of one of those uh, tracks a few people knew. And just through playing it every 80s night that I do when I DJ that music, it's become one of those staples. If you don't know Living on Video and you like 80s music and you don't know it, I mean, you're living under a rock. You got to listen to that right now. Just click me off, go listen, come back. Like I said, I, I'll get an extra view out of that. So Living on Video, probably one of my all-time favorite 80s songs. The full album itself is okay, but... Um, wasn't sure if I actually had the full-length album. This one I picked up just for no other reason that I don't know if I've ever seen it before. It can't be that incredibly rare. Um, one of the first movies I can remember along with Slapshot. Uh, Paul Newman's Slapshot. It's a Canadian thing. Um, that made me laugh myself sick when I was a kid. Caddyshack, the original soundtrack. I don't know if I... I'm sure I've once maybe maybe like the other album I was talking about Milo if I've probably seen it not taking notice but um, this was a buck uh, of course Kenny Loggins I'm all right and it has Journey on it and a bunch of other Kenny Loggins songs but you know what just for pure nostalgia that awesome cover who doesn't like Caddyshack you're not you're not human if you don't like Caddyshack but I picked that one up for a buck um, I don't know if I'll ever play it but who knows anyways. That has been to what, to what I could grab um, for uh, out of the mess that's my basement. That's all to my knowledge of, of stuff that I picked up since my last video. So yeah, there you go. I hope you enjoyed this um, this edition of Vinyl Finds. Um, like I said, I have record fair coming up, and I'm sure. I'm hopefully going to focus things and go for quality over quantity. So. Maybe I might have a video of two things, but they're going to be two incredible things. Who knows? Um, but I think at this point, maybe best I save my bucks for London. And then uh, I'm going to do another, like I did in my last summer. Uh, last summer, I did a little travelogue on YouTube through London, etc., and Prague and Berlin, record shopping. So I hope to do, to do that again this summer. I had a lot of fun doing those ones. And a lot of people like those videos. Anyways, I'm going to drag this out now. Uh, from my dining room slash living room slash kitchen slash deck slash sunlight and the moose running down the street knocking over the igloo right beside the guy skating down the street in his hockey equipment. I want to say cheers everyone. Thank you to everyone who's been watching my videos. Thank you to everyone who watched my record store day video. Uh, thank you to everyone who comments. I really appreciate it as always. Um, like I said, once again, Hobbit, I'd be like everyone else. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed these videos. Tell your friends. Tell your family. Anyways, take care, everyone. We'll see you next time, which is probably a record for a video, I'm, I'm sure. All right, next time. Bye-bye.